No, I'm ve- no, I'm very aware that you're you don't seem like the kind of person who's going to swear. But no, bloody bloody is fine, and I think probably oh, something like ass is fine. Flipping. Oh, flipping's fine. Flipping yeah, well. I think if we can if we can say bloody and ass, that's fine because yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I shan't go into a great rant. I'll, I'll just <laughs> no, do. Little, I'll just have a little rant. Yeah, go but, ahead. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a funny system. You kind when you're in it, you kind of feel everybody's there to help you. But when you work through it and you get yourself well, you think, oh, my God, for decades they were just medicating my distress. Uh, where if I'd have known Kelly Brogan earlier, I could have got well in six months. So, you see, I I got caught in the system when I was 19. 19. You got, sorry, do you mind me, no, do you mind me no, interjecting there? What, what, do you, what do you mean by you got caught in the system? Well, I was ill. And uh, I went to the doctors. With mania or depression, um, Lynn, sorry. I, I, had dizzy, I had dizzy spells. Yeah. And they gave me, because uh, they said it was my ears, they gave me an antipsychotic for my ears. And that's what they can do. Because I look back in my historic records. Well, obviously, that flipped my mind out. And I had, I had asthma, eczema. I had all sorts of things when I was ill, uh, when I, before I was 10. So then time I was 20... Then I didn't sleep for about a week or more. And uh, so then I got sectioned because I was, um, you know, they said that's the best thing for me. What age so was that, sorry, just, Lynn? What age was that? What age um, did you get sectioned? 22, 22. Mm. So that's, so that's so, three years after, you got sectioned three years after you had your first apparent symptoms, right? Yeah, well, yeah. But I, I was, I had ill, I, I used to get dizzy and... Um, spaced out and all that sort of thing and I just sort of said oh it's blood sugar it's this that and the other but you know they just medicate everything you know I had medications for everything well that was before the internet so I, I wasn't aware I couldn't find out any information apart from what the NHS give me but it wasn't until a few years ago when one of these medications it, it tripped me to be a uh, diabetic so I no, thought no. oh my god you know and then I learned the medication had triggered it so I thought, right, I'm going to reverse this diabetes thing. How am I going to do that? Because that's in my mum's family. Um, and as I was doing that, I got I got well from, you know, the bipolar symptoms. So I, I had a heck of a journey. But in that time, them decades, sometimes I was getting off meds because I knew I didn't feel right on them. Then I was ill. So I was up and down for decades. And... Um, and now I feel, oh, my God, they didn't treat me properly. They, they didn't find out I had depleted nutrients and I had toxicities. Or, you know, I had a chemical overload. And, you know, the NHS don't even look for that. They, they don't look for it. They just say, it's all in your head. Give you a load of mind, mind pellets, you know. That's what they do. And they, they just knock you out. Then you can't deal with all what you want, you know, need to heal. But it wasn't until I got on the internet and started researching about nutrition and functional medicine doctors in America that I learned a lot more about psychiatry. And it's got a very dark history. You know, it starts in uh, Hitler and uh, how they, you know, medicated people there. And um, in, in America now, they put fluoride in the water. So they're drinking fluoride. Well, that's that's a neurotoxin. So, you know... There's, there's so much to mental health what people don't know about. There's the sort of other side, you know. So I was never going to get well. I had a healthy diet, but it wasn't it wouldn't a detox diet. It wasn't a cleanse diet. Now, if you're hypersensitive to foods and allergies and things like that, <clears throat> you need to, you know, you need to work on what you're doing every day. How are you treating your adrenals and, you know, interrupting them sort of things. So... I was I was never going to get well, really. So I felt really angry after, as you can imagine, because I thought, oh, my God, what they've been doing to me for 30-odd thir- years has not really been in my best interest. That's how I felt. That was my feelings. That was my summary. That was my opinion. Well, when I told them that, they then sort of gaslight you and, and say, oh, no, you know, and defend themselves. And I... Then, then you know, you've got two sort of things which you sort of think you don't know who to believe, you know, because you, you're taught to not trust yourself. <coughs> oh, excuse me.
excuse me, I've got a tickle. So you, you don't know what to do, but I managed to withdraw off the medications and, you know, I've been fine for seven years now. So, you know, and when I go to the doctors, I shouldn't really be well, should I? Because I had bipolar one and that's meant to be a lifelong chemical brain imbalance, which is genetic. But so. <coughs> so are you OK, Lynn? water oh nice right so there's so many questions i want to ask I you I told, I told you a lot it all comes splurging out doesn't it? Yeah. no because lynn that's do you know what like i think even people listening and i know 100 percent uh the people i know that are listening so yeah. my friends and family who have been amazing to be fair I've had a, a good amount of sort of nice messages from people friends and stuff like that and family who have listened to it I think they're probably yeah. going to be more shocked I mean aside from all of that unbelievably amazing experiential information I think people are just going to be more shocked about the fact that I haven't said anything for about 20 minutes because I'm exactly the same as you I've got bipolar one shut you up did I no yeah like honestly you know even I was I just didn't even want to there were so many things I wanted to delve deeper into and I thought actually no I'm so hooked on what you're saying that I can I and also I'm I'm retaining I'm very spongy at the moment I'm retaining a lot of things so I know I've I've actually I've written down notes I hope you don't think I was doing anything well, else apart from writing more notes podcasts and then you can pick out what you want to go deep into. Because I go really deep, obviously, don't I? I had to go deep to get well. Because I had to learn what the NHS don't know. Yeah. So when I go to the doctor now, I think, well, you're the idiot, not me. Mm -hmm. Because I managed to... And I didn't even go to college. And I thought, I managed to heal myself, if you want to call it healing. I had a healing journey. I managed to get well from something I wasn't meant to get well from. Because they won't tell you it's reversible. They will, they'll, If I go to the doctor now, they'll say, well, you're in between episodes. I thought, what, for seven years? So can because I ask you Can I ask you an so interesting... You see, they, they still won't acknowledge that I'm well. They will They will not acknowledge it. Because <clears throat> it's against all their, their training. So they'll try and gaslight me and say, oh, well, yeah, you could, you could be all right, but you may be ill again. And I thought, oh, that's encouraging, you know, yeah. try and fright frighten me on the meds again so but I feel fine and I can manage my days obviously I have a lot to say and now I need quiet time you know so I make sure I have that quiet time and get away from people you know because I, I have sensory overload like a lot of bipolar people do you know, a lot of artistic people very creative people like you said you're a sponge you, we do take too much in so we've got to learn to, to find that sanctuary somewhere on our own and and to say to people, don't be offended, but I need a couple of days just doing nothing or chilling or, or whatever and, gra and grounding and getting with nature. Um, you see, in the Western world, we're taught to get on that mouse wheel and keep go, go, go until we get a better house, a better car. Um, we're not taught to rest. We're taught to keep push, push, pushing. So hence, our whole... Uh, our whole society in the Western world now is running on coffee to, to keep us all going. Keep They don't want us to rest, do they? <laughs> there's a reason why coffee's got the... Uh, I don't know this completely statistically, but there's a reason why coffee has the biggest profit margins. I, I don't think that's yeah. any surprise. Well, we've got a coffee economy. A lot of people, if they give up coffee, they wouldn't be able to get out of bed in four days. Yeah. Because coffee is like borrowing money from the bank. It's stealing from your adrenals and then you get adrenal fatigue and then you get cortisol and adrenaline the stress hormones so you get inflammation then inflammation will work its way to the brain well then the brain can't rest at night because you've got these cytokines going to your brain via your vagus nerve that's why i do yoga so yoga is really good for bipolar because it gets you in touch with your body instead of all in your mind so you need to do body things like swimming, saunas, sweating, not hyper-exercise because that, that stimulates 
That's why people get addicted to running. It's the adrenaline they get addicted to. It's a dopamine hit. So bipolar need, people need to do meditation, yoga, and um, slowing down and that sort of thing, which is really helpful, or creative things like arts and crafts and painting. <clears throat> but most of us are in high-stress jobs, and uh, too many people we say yes to instead of no. No, I can't do that. No, sorry, without giving a reason, but just say, no, I'm not doing that. I can't do that. You know, a lot of people are people pleasers. Um, so we try to help and do everything for everybody, which is a typical empath where you're, you're caring about other people more than you're caring about yourself because you don't want to sit with yourself. You don't want to look at yourself because you don't feel good about yourself because people have told you when you're younger, you're useless, you aren't good enough, you know, and they're, we're just super sensitive on the planet. You know, and at this time, this COVID is now, we've had to slow down. We've had to slow down, haven't we? Oh, of course, yeah. You're looking at the time. No, 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 I'm not. I'm, do you know what? I'm checking the levels, Lynn. And I, it's just because I was, I've, I've started using a new microphone and I just want to know oh, that. Because right. I actually, yeah. I'm, I'm taking, this is completely off topic, but I'm taking a lot of feedback. I'm getting a lot of praise, which is lovely. And what I said to my dad was, look, the praise is amazing. And receiving that praise is wonderful. But actually receiving good criticism is better. Because actually yeah. the whole idea in this is to get the perfect product it's a long long way away but that's what i'm aiming for um there's so many questions and it's ridiculous one one <laughs> one sort of more simple question which i'm very interested to find out your opinion on li- purely because i was literally having this conversation less than an hour ago do you if i asked you the question are you bipolar what would be your answer no, I would say I had bipolar and I'm okay now. Okay. <laughs> I'd say I had bipolar like I had the flu. I used to have the I, I used to have the flu. I used to have bipolar. That's how I see it. I mean, bipolar bipolar doesn't live in me anymore. I okay. don't accept that label. I believe I've overcome it. Yeah, I don't have no symptoms. I don't have no depression. I wake up in the morning like an excited child of what the day is going to bring. Even seven years later? Mm. Seven <sighs> seven years I've recovered. But it took me two years to recover because I didn't have any help. Um, so it was two years for me, help. Lynn. It was two years for me. It literally was two years for me. I had symptoms for... I had symptoms for 11 years and then it took me two... Well, it was the two worst years of my life, and it was horrendous. Um, but anyway, less less about that from me, to be honest, because this is this is one hundred percent about you. Um, your another another quite simple question, and I I think I know the answer to it, but I I think it's quite interesting because people, I think I think I've done you know as I said I've done a lot of research, and what comes back a lot is that people see bipolar as a gift. So simply. Do you see your your old bipolar as a gift? No, I don't. I see it as a curse. Because who wants to be ill? Who wants to be socially anxiety? Who wants to like not feel like they don't fit in? Who wants to be the odd one? Uh, who wants to be the seen as the one who can't manage their own thoughts? Or it's a curse, and and that's why they give you the label. You know, they should they shouldn't that's where the stigma is from the psychiatrist and and the doctor, because they say there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You've got symptoms which need addressing. That's what you got. Bipolar is a symptom that your body you you're not in your body properly, you know, because we have a, a spiritual body, an emotional body, uh, and all that. So you can't live in your body very well. Well who wants that? Who, who think that's a gift? That's not a gift. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> we can say arse. We can say arse. Yeah. Well, I was straight butt, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to give my um, take on that. And this is something that has taken... Uh, so I had treatment. Again, we'll, we'll get into 